the society in which we work. So over these three days, where we have such a, a rich feast of uh, discussion and keynote addresses, and above all, perhaps networking for you to enjoy, we'll be celebrating the unbeatable combination and the partnership between our countries, but we will also be strengthening it. And in that spirit of welcoming you to this convention and hoping that you will all find this hugely worthwhile and beneficial to you personally and to your companies, I now want to invite uh, the Minister of State for Trade and Investment from Her Majesty's Government, Lord Maud, to address us now. Lord Maud has had a distinguished and important career in business and in politics. He's been making a visit in uh, the south of India. He is now in Delhi for this convention, and we're delighted, I'm delighted to welcome him and invite him to address us now. very much indeed Patricia for that kind introduction and uh, it's a great pleasure for me to follow you at, at this rostrum. Uh, you and I are friends and colleagues. We uh, served in Parliament together. Um, it is the case that we were on the other side, opposite sides of the, uh, of the aisle, uh, but nonetheless uh, uh, actually very close colleagues working together with completely aligned interests uh, in our work to support the partnership between Britain and India. So thank you to you for the work you've done, the leadership you've given to the UK at IBC. It's hugely appreciated. It's gone from strength to strength and it's a vastly important part, an indispensable part of the uh, economic and commercial relationship between Britain and India. So Patricia, thank you very much. You mentioned that I've had a career in business as well. I've actually had a number of careers. My family maintain I've been unable to hold down a career, let alone a job. Um, I've, in fact, occupied three of the four most unpopular occupations there are. Uh, I've been a barrister. I've been an investment banker. I've been an MP. Uh, but I'm only 62, and there's still time to be an estate agent. <laughs> uh, one mustn't uh, limit oneself um, in, in, in any way. Um, I was last here in Delhi two years ago uh, and uh, visited the same cities. Uh, next time I must branch out more. Uh, uh, and uh, it's, it's great to see how much huge progress that there has been. The relationship, politicians would always talk about how good the relationship is between the country they come from and the country they're visiting. But actually this feels like much more than a relationship. This feels like a real, deep, committed, long-term partnership. Britain and India are indissolubly linked together by our history, by the links between our peoples, the fact that there are, uh, as you mentioned, Patricia, you know, an Indian company is the biggest manufacturing employer in Britain, the fact that there are one and a half million British citizens of Indian origin. These are links that, that go back a long way, but are living and thriving and bring us closer together. I was privileged earlier today uh, to take part in the launch of the report that you and Richard both referred to. And I think I knew a little, I thought I knew a little bit about how deep the economic and commercial links were. I was staggered to find uh, how deep the sheer scale of the investment in both directions between uh, Britain, Britain's investment here in India uh, and vice versa. It dwarfs uh, any other links between India and any other European country and I'm so proud that that's the case. And I'm so proud of the commitment that's been shown uh, on both sides to make this happen and to make it a success. And I make this commitment to all of you today, and I know that my colleague and friend Sajid Javid, when he's here tomorrow, will make the same commitment. We will do all that is needed to make this partnership a success so that it can go on from strength to strength 
for the future. Two days ago, I was in Karnataka with the Chief Minister of Karnataka at the groundbreaking of the new facility for GSK uh, outside uh, Bangalore. Yesterday, I was in Mumbai where we launched, among other things, uh, a fintech bridge between London and uh, India, where we will, and, and the old concepts of everything's about exports or one-way investment, sort of look a bit old-fashioned uh, in that context, because what this is about is businesses looking for innovation wherever it can come from. And there is so much innovation in the world of digital and tech and financial technology uh, that exists both in uh, Britain and in India, that both sides cannot but succeed, cannot but gain, by bringing those two ever closer together. So that's what we're determined to do. Earlier today, I took part in another form of financial technology, not quite so cutting edge and new, although it's advanced. Uh, I had the privilege of striking a gold sovereign at the joint venture between the Royal Mint and its Indian partners uh, outside Delhi. Uh, and uh, what a pleasure uh, that was to take part in that. So old, new, continuing, uh, innovative. Uh, there is so much that lies in this relationship and there is so much that is yet to come. Britain is open for business. I say it's the best place in the world to do business in and from. So for Indian businesses to launch their, to run their international businesses from London and from Britain makes every kind of sense. India is increasingly open to business. Two great countries, indissolubly linked by history together, uh, with a common purpose, uh, both open for business, and as Prime Minister Modi said, together, unbeatable. Thank you. Francis, thank you so much indeed for that wonderful uh, address to, to this gala dinner. And may I now invite you, please, to unveil a rather special portrait, accurately copy, of a portrait which um, I think you will immediately recognize and all understand the significance. What a good, um, and what a good day to do that. Um, the day after Her Majesty celebrated uh, her time as the longest serving, longest reigning Queen of the United Kingdom uh, and uh, the head of the world. Thank you very much indeed. Now, I referred earlier to the Indian company that famously is the largest manufacturing employer in Britain. That, of course, is the Tata Group. And we in the UK India Business Council, we value hugely the support, encouragement, and advice that we get from all our members, and particularly all our strategic partners. One of those strategic partners over many years now is the Tata Group. And it gives me great pleasure on your behalf now to invite Mr. Madhu Khanna, the Group Head of Business Development for Tata and Sons, an extremely distinguished leader of, may I say, India's probably iconic company, to address us now, Mr. Khanna. Let me be, uh, begin by thanking Trisha uh, for his opening remarks. The UK IBC has a flourished under leadership, and we at the Tatars and, and I speak on behalf of all the Indian companies uh, in this group um, value your council. Thank you. Um, thank you, Lord Maud, for your uh, for your remarks, and um, and thank you for taking the journey and coming and addressing us today. The UK IBC has uh, flourished. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> 
I'm glad to speak at this event, uh, at the UK-based event that frankly takes place during exciting times for the UK-Indian relations. Uh, <clears throat> at the Tatas, as, as it was mentioned, we have a long history of operating businesses in the UK, having been there for more than a century. In uh, terms of our presence, the Tata Group companies includes uh, heritage British brands, as many of you are aware, like Jaguar Land Rover and Tetley, and we employ approximately 65,000 people in the UK. This makes us the largest, one of the largest employers and one of the largest investors in the manufacturing sector in the country. Tata businesses in the UK last year generated around $13 billion, which accounts for almost 8% of the group's global revenues. We like to think that a huge majority of UK residents touch the Tata, Tata Group every day through salt, tea, software, or automobiles. Uh, again, I want to take an opportunity to thank many people in this room for helping make, help make this possible. More of a broader perspective, we believe that the, that the economic relationship between the UK and India is on a firm footing and has got significant potential for future growth. As uh, Richard mentioned, uh, the UK stands as, a, as, <clears throat> as the third largest investor in, in India. It ranks first among the G20 countries as far as FDI into this country. Um, interestingly, India continues to be one of the largest investors in the UK. I understand we are actually the, one of the third largest and the largest Asian country as far as investments into the UK. Um, a fact which is worth mentioning to this group is that the UK attracts more India investment than the, than the rest of the EU put together. Uh, as mentioned earlier, given our experience in the UK-India corridor, we believe that there is a significant potential for further growth on both the trade and investment fronts. Uh, this is clearly reflected by the tremendous focus given by the policymakers both in India and in the UK to strengthen economic and commercial cooperation between the two countries. There are various bilateral mechanisms that are already in place, and uh, we are delighted that there's, there's continued emphasis on these bilateral mechanisms that further strengthen.